ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the FinStep Asia Edge podcast. I'm back in Dubai uh, as on the sidelines of the Dubai FinTech Summit, but with a special person uh, who was responsible to bring me to Dubai all this a couple of years back, uh, this Deepa Raja Kaban, who is the vice chairperson and managing director of the Virtual Assets Regulatory Authority of Dubai, VARA for short, uh, and uh, have been doing wonderful work in building regulations and an ecosystem for virtual assets uh, in Dubai and the UAE as a whole. Thank you so much for taking out time, Deepa, and joining us for this podcast. It's truly an honor to have you, not only because we work together, but because of what's being built in the city and with Wara leading the way uh, in Asia and globally with regards to the regulatory framework. So thank you for joining us. Firstly, thank you very much for having me on your show uh, and, your, and your podcast here, uh, Mushir. Uh, what I will say to your audience is um, I think a lot of people in Hong Kong are very glad uh, to have you back. Uh, and okay. we were very glad to have you here. So I, I, I was actually told just during this last week by quite a few people, uh, hey, don't steal our people. Right? <laughs> so uh, I think that says a lot about you. So well done uh, to you. To you for having, you know, trusted us enough to come and experience the environment with us, but also for going back and spreading the word. Much appreciated. Thank you. I think it's it's it was a wonderful experience being here for uh, the one and a half years, uh, learning about how the city functions, but also being able to work collaboratively with the ecosystem. And uh, I think that's one of the, you know, I want to start off with that question, which is about the evolution of VARA when from the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the law in 2022 mm -hmm. to the setup and regulation uh, as part of the broader vision that uh, Sheikh Mohammed has for the city. I typically say impossible is nothing is the tagline mm -hmm. for Dubai. Uh, and uh, would love your views on how VARA evolved, mm -hmm. how it came about and uh, what is the vision behind VARA? Yeah. Um, so y you are very right in pointing out that the DNA of the city is very much about what uh, what is a goalpost and a vision and uh, making sure the obstacles along the way get resolved, right? The challenges are bound to be, but if you do not set yourself a challenging target, you're never going to be able to exceed and fulfill for your economy uh, what you owe to the people, right? Uh, so very much about um, uh, imagine what is impossible and then try to beat that, right? Um, and in that context, coming out of COVID, which I think uh, a lot of people probably already know, Dubai and the UAE were um, about the first economy to reopen Correct. in a yeah. post-COVID environment, right? Uh, back in 2019, uh, early parts of 2020, okay. if you will, mid, mid of 2020, we were open already. Sure. Uh, and open to tourism at that time uh, and to events showed shortly after that, right? We hosted right. the expo bang on, you know, uh, immediately after in 2021, it was postponed by a year. But at that time, I think the world also clearly recognized that it is possible to safely, safely reopen an economy yeah. without compromising on the health of its citizens, which is obviously the first and foremost priority, right? Correct. But equally, ensuring that people that come into our market do not take back risk to their markets, right? That was at the human level, of course, yeah. but this um, was then to think about the economy broadly and say, we have been traditionally an economy for a flow through market, right? So whether it's logistics, it's transport, it's trade, uh, and that's, that has been Dubai's proposition to the rest of the world. So how do we think about financial services in that context? And how do we think about the new economy sure. in that context? Of course, building what we've already got, yeah. but if you look at Web3, blockchain, metaverse, and AI, the underlying ecosystem there is largely enabled by a lot of blockchain related technology Service and crypto uh, crypto virtual assets it's a very important part of it uh, then we were we were sort of construed to think about what does the rest of the world have mm -hmm. in this context of the last decade or two, perhaps even 15 years or so, sure. uh, that the industry has been in existence, the crypto world, uh, and what do the other jurisdictions have uh, that we can potentially replicate and build on, right? Uh, and very quickly came to the realization that there isn't really a very specialist regime designed for virtual assets. Correct. And that's really where the idea of VARA came up, and we were set up in the February uh, of 2022. And that's, that's how we came into being. And so, you know, we have the story, as you mentioned, which is no specific virtual assets regulatory authority yeah. globally. Yeah. And you know the 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 approach that Dubai has taken in terms of being an enabler, right? Sure. And uh, being in the forefront of that. 
so what was the approach to building the regulations mm. right mm. at the initial stages uh, you know industry consultations and a lot of other things elements so what has been vara's main focus in mm. approach towards building the regulations uh, so that that's a terrific question right and uh, and i say this um, out of a lot of um, uh, respect and humility uh, in the context of if you look at global regulations which is where all of us come in Correct. from yeah. there's so much fantastic work that actually has been done right not only in the world of fs but also in the world of tech and where the two converge and where it seemed to be um, a, a little sort of um, if you will a, a learning ground for sure. us was to say is is the best approach to look at what has been done and evolve it or is the best approach to reinvent from scratch just because another regulator doesn't exist and we chose to do the former right we said let's let's look in benchmark because there's such great work that has been done we are here to learn from uh, from the journey that other regulators have gone through and sort of said look we're not able to resolve this and perhaps work with them sure. to see what can we construct and construe in our environment that we may be able to get to market a little bit faster yeah. um and use us Dubai, if you will, as the sandbox for the rest of the world, right? So yeah. that, if you will, was the construct. Concept, that was yeah. the that was the principle of how we went about this. Um, and the second thing, and as you've been uh, working with us, you, you're very familiar with this. We are a principles-based regulator, not too dissimilar from MICA, right? Sure. Um, and, and there are other regulators that do the same as well. Um, we're not. Our regulations are not product-based. They're not Correct. specific to the kind of product you create, and the reason we chose to do this—it's more activity-based, right? The yeah. reason we chose to do it is the product and the technology is always going to evolve significantly faster than a regulation around it, right? Correct. Yeah. Do you want to create a set of rules that is product-confined mm -hmm. and therefore technology-restrictive? in a certain sense right even if you don't intend for it to be it's going to end up being as such would you rather be about the activity that is being conducted yeah. and the people that are being serviced because that is your job as a regulator your responsibility as a regulator to protect the 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 um, the lives of the of of the community that is engaged with that um, with that Correct. industry yeah. right and so we're a very activity based regulator and that's sort of how our regulations have been set up as as is evident in the re several rule books that you see but the second part of it is you can either create regulations and say i'm never going to change my mind about yes. it or you can say I understand that this industry is evolving, the market's evolving, and as they are learning, I want to learn with them. I come to the table in that sense humble, right? I come to the table with an open ear and an open attitude to saying as you grow, allow me to grow with you, right? If you have a point of view that we may not have considered, let us discuss it so that we can then test it perhaps in smaller proportions. I don't want to call it a sandbox, but we had an MVP program, a minimum viable product. That way I get to see your behavior. You get to demonstrate how effective you are at thinking about self-regulation, at thinking about responsibility. And if you are great at what you do anyway, yeah. then our job is to provide you the guardrails and not to micromanage you. Right. And that's sort of, if you will, the principle of how VARA has been organized. It would be nice to understand how you see it as that, you know, that living regs. I'm using that term loosely yeah. uh, in terms of how that will evolve as, as, as we more stabilize in the uh, it, business it, models. Yeah. Right. So, um, it, you know, when the, when, when the industry or the market hears uh, the word living regs, yeah. the, the foremost concern is, oh, my God, I'm signing up to a set of rules and tomorrow those rules are going to change on me. Right. And so I, I do want to, to caveat it's, it's a fantastic terminology, but people interpret it the way they want to, yeah. depending on the condition that that, that is being imposed on them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, the, but yes, we are a living regulation and we are living in the context of saying the base plate doesn't change. The foundations don't change. The anchor points don't change. We are there for, of course, AML, KYC, um, sort of uh, coordination with FATF, mm -hmm. compliance on all of those trans, cross-border risk in an absolute no-no. We cannot be the ones originating a risk that then gets transported to the rest of the world. Yeah, and as you were saying, this is very pertinent. I was... I was reflecting on, on the, the concept of responsible yeah. innovation and that links up to the, how can we enable people, give them Correct. Uh, access and ability to function uh, in a normalish way yeah. while protecting others and you know uh, who are partners and uh, whom you work with in the same way 
with the VARA regulations, which is responsible innovation. I completely see your point. Like you're able to respond in, in a not desirable condition for a market, and you're able to respond proactively, responsibly, and in a very high risk space. Equally, can you translate that behavior when you look at it from a lens of uh, uh, enablement, Correct. In, in the lens of progression, in the lens of forward thinking, and something that's very desirable, yes, right? Yes, exactly. That's what so I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you take a risk and actually change it into a reward? And this is kind of where uh, where we're at. Yeah, it, I think that's what I found about uh, Dubai's DNA, right? What, what, what excited me about and still does is this element of not looking at something as a problem, Correct. but looking at how can we enable something. Correct. And that's why I was giving the example, which is had a big impact at the time when everybody's struggling, forgetting. And so in a similar way, you can have a lot of positive things which may not be growing necessarily. And, and then Dubai, look, and AI is another element that Dubai is working on very, very well. So uh, th yeah. these are two very, very important points you make, right? Yeah. Um, knowing that there is an issue there is a constraint, there is a challenge that is, is a global challenge, Correct. right? Yeah. Uh, it is for people around the world, and if there is something we can do uh, to, to one, prove, almost serve as a test bed, and prove that it can be resolved in an effective fashion, yeah. uh, and therefore, and in that's the, the, this context, it's, it's an important one, the risks that are being generated can be mitigated, can be managed, but until you accept the risk and work with that product and the set of activities around the product, you don't understand the risk Correct. as effectively as you could. Yes. So prohibition is never the solution for remediation. Remediation comes from acceptance. Correct. And I do think that that's a principle that's very much core to the DNA of the city. Right. And, and building on that, as we go towards the, you know, we had the foundation, we, yeah. we've now have uh, people coming into Dubai, yep. coming into the region, mm -hmm. and uh, the regs have been out for over a year now, yeah, uh, the full yeah. uh, full market regs, and we've had licenses issued. What do you see as uh, the next phase of both the regulations, mm -hmm. but also from a market perspective? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what's, what's, what are you seeing in the market, and how do you see Wara um, looking and treating that? So I, I want to answer that from a Dubai UAE market as well as a global market perspective Please, for the yeah. world of virtual assets, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so VARA's uh, establishment of the rules and and uh, sort of the facilitation of a relatively secure environment for virtual assets, I think has had a largely if, um, uh, sort of conducive impact, both on the industry, of course, and their responsibility, but also on fellow regulators, which I think I'm, I'm slightly um, happier about, right? You, of course, see across the world m more regulators understanding and seeing that, hey, this is possible without it being a, a very big risk. Micah was already up there doing it. The FCA yeah. was, um, HKMA and the um, SFCB uh, SFC has yeah. been. So, uh, and of course, MAS has been for a while. Australian regulators have been too. So several regulators have been doing really good work in this environment for, for many years, right? Sure. Well over a decade. And I do think that um, having a test bed that actually works, almost a proof of concept, allows them to also have uh, have the ability to convince their own ecosystems mm -hmm. that this is doable. And, and you know, there isn't um, as much a risk as you may have conceived it to be insofar as it can be managed. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so one part of that dialogue is very much a bilateral dialogue. It's very much a conversation with fellow regulators to say how, how many of these rules are um, almost um, exchangeable, interoperable, uh, yeah, and acceptable in, in a way in which which um, you can expect them to be uh, the uh, the risks are minimized, right? The risks are minimized, and the the ac acceptance of the risk is more tolerable. A general level of acceptance is established at a global level, right? So that's part one. Fair. The second part of that equation is the industry becoming more responsible. The industry has become a lot more conscious about the risks that they're permeating, mm -hmm. and a few bad characters should not necessarily, irresponsible characters, I don't mean bad in the other sense, irresponsible characters should not deter from the fact that the majority of the industry is actually quite responsible, wants to be responsible, Correct. they just don't know how to, yeah. right? And they want to have 
that conversation much more progressively. And I say crypto loosely, but I mean virtual assets is here to stay. And we've seen that in the, in the broader Absolutely. traditional finance Absolutely. ecosystem with some of the large... And, and you see that yeah. actually great point, right? You see that it, the, most of the conversations we're having today are not native crypto. Yeah. Most of the conversations we're having today are TradFi. TradFi conversations. TradFi yeah. participants that want to be in the DeFi space, which I think is brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Now, you, you touched upon this, and I just want to build a little bit more with regards to uh, cross-border nature yes. and collaboration. Yeah. Um, the UAE in general has been very collaborative, has done a lot of work uh, with the central bank doing with, you know, uh, with Hong Kong MA yeah. over the last few years. Uh, and the governments have also been very proactive in building partnerships and business bridges. Um, I wanted to get a perspective uh, from the Hong Kong Greater China uh, perspective and connecting with Dubai yeah. and UAE, how, how you see that evolve. And you've, you've uh, been, VAR has been very, uh, approachable for Hong Kong businesses as well as delegations right. as they come in. So how can what can they expect and how could this build further in terms of a partnership in the coming years? Look, you, yeah. you make a tremendous point, right? Yeah. The UAE and Dubai have tremendous uh, bilateral relationships, one of the most connected uh, in that sense and from a political standpoint, right? Yeah. Um, are uh, both in terms of the, the nationalities we host uh, as, as a city, more than 200 nationalities, Correct. right? Yeah. It's one of the most, uh, yeah. really a microcosm for the world in Many yes. ways, right? Yeah. Uh, not just because we we welcome people, but we also welcome governments and uh, and our relationships with conducting business in those markets has been tremendous. We've got our Dubai Economy and Tourism, yes. which is the entity that is responsible for a lot of these conversations to happen. You have seen towards the last quarter of last year, uh, we had some great engagement with Hong Kong, particularly uh, yeah. bilaterals that were signed with uh, with the jurisdiction as with a lot of the Asian markets, right? And uh, and our a relationship with the Chinese, the mainland Chinese, as well as the Hong Kong regulators has been phenomenal. Uh, progressive in the sense that a lot of data sharing, a lot of openness and saying uh, not only can our companies um, have access to other both both our markets uh, because naturally we get exposure mm -hmm. to different things but how can our rules be sort of interoperable in some sense how can the regime be acceptable a level of equivalence that mm -hmm. can be yeah. established um, and the risk profiles right from both regulators perspective do we consider our risk profiles palatable to Fair. the other yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's really the kind of convergence of minds uh, that you would expect to formulate with any other regulator Later. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, for Hong Kong businesses and for mainland Chinese businesses, the door is always welcome. For all of Dubai uh, and, of course, Vara in particular, the technology and the innovation and the spirit of progress that you guys have de demonstrated, um, phenomenal. I mean, honestly. Uh, and this has been, the industry has been housed in your ecosystem for the longest time. So I, I, I hear a lot of complaints actually from, from your fellow regulators, don't steal our people. And I <laughs> no, have to I say, um, we, we do that with the kindest heart to say they're all coming back to you with a lot more business from our end. Yeah, I think that that business is only gonna grow in terms yes. of collaboration and uh, it's a partnership and it's in totally. setting up in both places. And to that effect, there's a lot of businesses I talked to in Hong Kong uh, when I've gone back and otherwise as well who are keen in exploring Dubai as a market and, and to get licensed with WARA, uh, what would be some of the things you want them to keep in mind as they come towards uh, applying for licenses with WARA? Uh, when they come, I mean, no different from you would with any other regulator, right? Yeah. Our rules and regulations are fa fairly comprehensive. Look, that you're coming here, uh, as I mentioned right up in the beginning, not not to become the jurisdiction of least resort. You're coming here because you're regulated by a jurisdiction that the rest of the world finds as a convergence point. Correct. So that you're able to operate and uh, sort of communicate and access audiences from the rest of the world yeah. that you may geographically find slightly different, difficult. From from being in, uh, in in a far eastern jurisdiction, right? Uh, already within our space, you've got direct access to Africa, to the Indian subcontinent, uh, to the Middle East, of course. Yeah. Uh, but then there is Europe, and the Americas are not too far away, yeah. right? So how do you make something serve as your global hub and perhaps supplement the activity that you're already facilitating out of your mainland Chinese operations slash your your Hong Kong operations, right. um, which may be more dedicated and specific to. Asia, right? So that's that's number one. And number two would be once you form 
familiarize yourself with our regulations. The regulations are um, largely TradFi based, but very definitely with a customization to DeFi. So it's not just a build on what already yeah. exists. It is fairly comprehensive in its nature, but there are always going to be things that you may want to do that may not necessarily be covered, or you may not be sure how to interpret that in sure. your coverage, right? Yeah, so it's 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 it's, it's been a, a wonderful experience in, in seeing that growth. I've seen that collaborative openness approach, uh, and deep uh, for having been in that system from within to it, showcasing why and where we head in the future for virtual assets. Well, I would, I would say to your audience, uh, if you aren't familiar, definitely speak to Mashir. He is very, <laughs> okay. very familiar with the environment and has been such a great contributor to, to our establishment and to our success. So thank you for being, being part come. of thank the you. environment yeah. and thank you to your people as well. Right? Thank you very They're much. They're more than welcome. Thank you very much. A pleasure. <laughs> Take care. Audience, please stay tuned to our social media and follow us on Spotify, Apple, and YouTube to listen to more interesting conversations and have special guests like Deepa on. Thank you very much.